Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with Econ Course Companion. And let's take a look at perfect competition, but focus on the revenue curves. It's really important. Step one, understand how the revenue curves are drawn and understand that the shape of the revenue curves is controlled by the market structure in which you operate. And in the case of perfect competition, it is going to create a unique set of revenue curves, revenue curves that are different than the other market structures we're going to study, which, of course, are monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. All right, so let's take a look at these. All right, the first thing to understand is that in perfect competition, all firms, and this is huge, my friends, you mustn't ever remember this. Ever remember this. <laughs> you mustn't ever forget this. Firms are price takers. They have no choice but to take the price that is determined by an outside force. And that outside force is the industry in which this firm is going to operate. So if you're in the corn market, that outside force is the international commodities exchange market that oftentimes the price comes out of Chicago, Illinois. Why? Because if you want to sell corn, there's so much supply of it, and we're operating in perfect competition, that there's one price globally. Another great example I always say to my students is the international foreign currency exchange market. My friends, we get it. Like These forces of what decides the value of, say, I don't know, um, the Argentinian peso versus the U.S. dollar, it's based on what? The international foreign currency market, that's what it's based on. So firms, if you want to go into their international currency market, you got to accept the price that is given to you. And as a result of taking a price, in this case, this is, comes, up, comes to us from Jocelyn Blink, by the way, who is the author, along with Ian Dorton, of an excellent econ course companion textbook. And if, let's say the price here is $5. Well, that means that this firm, not only do they have no choice... <laughs> But to take the $5, but as a result of the price being $5, then their average revenue, their marginal revenue is also going to be $5. Because what's average revenue? Average revenue is how much the firm makes on average per unit sold. Well, if every unit sold is $5, then their average revenue per unit sold is 5 bucks, right? And their marginal revenue... Marginal revenue is defined as how much the firm makes by selling one more unit of a good or unit of output. What does that mean? Well, it's going to be $5. So in the price taker's market structure, as opposed to the price maker's market structure, which is that of monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition, you are going to have a perfectly elastic, perfectly elastic, perfectly elastic demand curve the average revenue curve always equals demand. If you don't understand that, check some previous videos. And in this case, marginal revenue, because that's the amount of money made per, on the last unit sold, is also going to be $5. You got a perfectly elastic uh, um, margin revenue, average revenue, and demand curve. In terms of total revenue, TR is constant. Total revenue is constant. Why? Because for every unit of output, they're getting 5 bucks. Every unit of output, $5, $5. So as these output continues, all of these, every piece of output, every additional piece of output is going to be worth five more bucks because the price is $5, right? So 35 obviously, is what the total revenue is if this firm were to sell seven units of output. All right, so, take, so hold on to that, and we'll take a look at the next slide. All right, so one thing is to say, okay, now let's back up a second. That's what the revenue curves look like. Yeah, I get that. But where does this come from? Okay, this price comes from the industry. And the industry, and you must always show these two diagrams together, okay? You have been focused probably in your course of study on your study of the firm and what's going on over here. Cost, revenue, profit, you're focusing on the firm, the firm, the firm. But what we need to do is back up a second and say, wait, where is this price coming from? Well, it's coming from the industry, because the industry is the thing that is dictating right, the price to each firm. So if this were the international currency market, right, there's going to be an exchange, there's going to be a price equilibrium between the demand and the supply of Argentinian pesos, let's say, to U.S. dollars. Right? So there's the price, and that P is passed over here. 
If we put this in the commodities market, let's say that this is, I don't know, $30 for a bushel of corn. P comes over here. And that, if you want to sell corn, every firm must accept that price. And the way you show where this price comes from is a very, very simple supply and demand diagram, price, currency, origin, quantity, right? The units. This is the rule of 11 diagram. If you've been following my, my series all the way through, uh, this is the rule of 11 diagram for microeconomics. And it arrives at a price of $5. And we know from previous, uh, the previous slide that that is where average revenue and margin revenue sit. Okay? So this is how in a price taker's market, and there's only one perfect competition, you derive that price that the firms must take as a result of functioning in this market. Okay. So now take a look at this. What have we done? We have taken the marginal, we have taken the two diagrams from the previous slide, right? The industry and the firm. And now all of a sudden, the next step is going to be to add the marginal cost curve. This is a price takers market structure, right? So we are ultimately trying to figure out if this firm is showing abnormal profit, normal profit, or a loss, okay? And the key is, once you get to this point, okay? Once you draw your marginal cost curve up here, what you're going to do is you are going to say, okay, where MC equals MR, that determines the quantity that the firm wants to produce because at this quantity, where MC, at this point right here, at MR, the firm, at this quantity, the firm has its greatest chance of maximizing profits. It doesn't mean that it's going to. It just means that it has the opportunity to make the most profits, maximize revenue, where quantity, where the marginal cost curve equals marginal revenue at that level of output. Okay? So we are getting there. We're getting there. Closer and closer and closer we come to be able to show abnormal profit, normal profit, and loss in the perfect competition market structure. We're right there, my friends. And now what you're going to do is think about what you need to do in order to show that. And for that, take a look at the next video on abnormal profit and the following two videos about normal profit and loss. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.